seconds of silence, so then it'll Ready. connect into the... Okay, so if everybody will just... You're ready. Go okay, ahead. thank you, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Good this morning. Is a... <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Those of you at home, you, you can see the existing council here and our council members elect on the screen. Um, <clears throat> Good morning. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Town of Fort Myers Beach Town Council. It's a virtual meeting and we appreciate everyone being here. It's Monday, April 6th and 9, 11 a.m. Um, you know what? Let's all say the Pledge of Allegiance, shall we? <coughs> I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag. flag of the United uh, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Michelle, do you have an invocation for us? I do. Wonderful. Almighty God, who has given us many faiths, thank you for the blessings of liberty and free conscience celebrated in this town. As we bring our truths to the discussion of public issues, may we offer them as contributions to one another, not as weapons, as we rejoice that we need not think alike to love alike. We pray this in the multiple names which arise in the citizens of our town, the awe of the holy, the sense of community, and the impulse to service. Amen. 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 The next item on the agenda is the approval of the final agenda. If any, does anyone have a change or addition they would like to make? Yes, please. Uh, Madam Mayor, can we? Can we move item number 10, local uh, recognitions and achievements up to uh, just after number five, approval of the minutes? Yes, ma'am, we certainly can. Uh, is there anyone else, anyone disagree with that? Anybody have any other changes they'd like to make? Okay, so I have a motion please to approve the agenda, moving item 10 before, uh, what do we have a I'll move. I'll move the you, okay, so we have a, a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the motion carries unanimously. The next item is an approval of the minutes. These are just just to make this easy. I'll do each one. Okay, uh, the town council regular meeting of May thirteenth, nine a.m. May I have a motion to approve that as distributed? Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion by Joanne and a second by Rexanne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. The next item is the town council special meeting of March 18th, 3.30 p.m. Is there a motion to approve as the minutes were distributed? <clears throat> motion to approve. Second. Is there, there's a motion by Joanne and a second by Rexanne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. The last section of minutes section of minutes is the town council special meeting of March 19th, 2020. May I have a motion to approve those minutes as they were distributed to you? So moved. Motion. Motion by Vice Mayor Murphy and seconded Second. by Joanne Champ. Uh, is there any discussion on that? The motion carries unanimously. Okay, so the next item then is the local achievements and recognitions. Joanne, I'll just come straight to you. Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank everyone in the community. Um, this is such a challenging time and those who are doing their part just by staying safe at home. Thank you to you. Those who are doing the essential services of the town, putting themselves at the risk and those in health care. Thank you to you. Those who are, I guess, suffering economically and in other ways by, by following what has to be done right now. Thank you to you. And most of all, we'll get this to get together with this, we, we will overcome this. We are FMB and thank you to those who are doing uh, the t-shirts and the things to help other people. So um, number one and number two, I just wanted to take a minute to say what an honor it was to serve as a counselor uh, for this community and as vice mayor um, since I was appointed in December of 26 and then elected in 2017, I've had the honor of working with six other very passionate and dedicated people including the four here and then of course 
uh, former Mayor Dennis Bovac and former Mayor, Mayor Tracy Gore. And it, it, it's been just a pleasure uh, to work with everyone. We had aggressive goals on our strategic plan. And um, I think that uh, we're leaving with the town back on a good solid financial foundation and lots of exciting projects on the doorstep. And um, all of these things are never possible though without the dedication and talent of town staff. I wish I was there to thank each of them personally, uh, the legal counsel of our attorney and strong management by our manager. Um, it's everybody together, FMB strong once again, even in the town all the time that gets things done. And while I did a lot of research, as everybody knows that's my personality, I need to give special thanks to Roger because he went, met with me every, uh, every week for countless hours and helped all my research be directed in with his expertise of, of management and I appreciate it. And I need to thank my husband, who's amazing, who's always the wind be beneath my wings and lets me do these things, even though it means sacrifices on his part. And I do look forward to soaring on new adventures with him. So I congratulate the new council. You now stand at the intersection where exciting forward movement from the town is meeting the unprecedented impacts of a global pandemic. There is no way that you could have expected this, but I have confidence that together with the support of the staff and the caring community, you're going to keep together in progress, work together for success, protect our residents, and when the time is right, you will revigorate our island and we will be back on track. We are FMB, we are FMB strong, and I give best wishes to everybody. God bless us all and God bless America. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Bruce, do you have any comments, any um, achievements, recognitions, or comments? Well, after Joanne said all that, I feel like I ought to say something. I wasn't prepared to, <laughs> to say anything, but I would just echo that I enjoyed my time uh, on the council. Uh, I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish. I wish there was a few more projects that we had been able to get done before I got off, but uh, I think we left it in good hands with who we have on the council now, and I look forward to their successes. So thanks very much. Thank you, Bruce. Rexanne, any comments? I would like to, first of all, ask the mayor's permission that we allow the incoming council members to also make comment in this uh, section of the agenda. I they haven't been sworn in yet. Um, and my comments would be that I would like to uh, praise and thank the group of people, especially Janine Pulaskis, who is doing the FMB Strong Project. It's, it's an amazing project, a great idea, and so well executed. And I'd like to thank Beach Baptists because they're out there putting themselves in danger by giving food out every day for the Lee County School District, as well as for the Harry Chapin Food Bank and continuing to, to run their, uh, their choice market. Thank you, Roxanne. I have no objection to the council members elect speaking. Does anyone else? Okay, no. Mr. Murphy, anything from you? Uh, I'd like to thank everybody in the town who's uh, cooperating thus far with the, uh, the stay at home uh, suggestion here. It seems to be working very well here on the beach. Uh, as I uh, go up and down the sidewalk uh, walking the dog, I, it's like a ghost town. So that's a success, you know. Uh, oh, it's good to see that. And, uh, and, and of course, everybody, uh, I'll echo everyone else's comments, everybody that's helping out in the room at the churches and so forth, and the, we are FMB uh, move and everything. There's a lot of people in, uh, in tough straits right now, and uh, we're going to try to help them get through all this. And, and I think all of us coming together and, and helping each other, uh, that'll be accomplished. To my outgoing members, it was a pleasure serving with you this year. Uh, Joanne, Bruce, and of course, my old pal, Anita Saris. Uh, I know you're not going anywhere, but uh, <laughs> all three of you, and you'll, you'll uh, continue to, to serve the town in your own ways. I know you will. And uh, so I thank you for your for your uh, for your friendship and, and for uh, for serving with you. And uh, we look forward to uh, the things to come. To the new members, uh, 
you're not sworn in yet, but I welcome you as well. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, you couldn't have come in at a more exciting time. I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm not going to say worst time. I'm going to say exciting, because there, there will be challenges. And uh, but I think I know you're up to it. Knowing the three of you, I know you're up to it. So anyhow, that's all I have, Madam Chair. And, thank, uh, you. thank you, thank you, Ray. You all. Thank you, um, Bill Veach. Have you got any comments? Oh, of course. Um, I would like to personally thank the uh, the outgoing council for demonstrating how to uh, how the decorum, how to uh, how to present yourself, uh, get your work done in a uh, in a civil and in thoughtful way. Um, you've been an example on how we should operate going forward, and I really appreciate that. But I'd also really like to this 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 town and community um, and how they are dealing with this crisis. These efforts on how neighbors are still managing to help neighbors without putting themselves in risk. Uh, the way that people are looking after our small businesses, they're such a vital and um, vital part of the fabric of our society. I think it really shows what community we are. We're not just the town, we're not just an incorporation. We are a community and I wanna thank everybody who is making the effort to help our businesses and help our residents get through this. Thank you, Bill. Dan, do you have any comments? Yeah. Uh Similar to what uh, Bill had to say, I'd like to to thank the three of you that are are, are leaving us, or or I should say, going back to enjoying some time off. Um, thank you for all the help you've given me along the way, uh, guidance and uh, the offer to continue to help. Should I know I will have questions coming up. Um, to all the healthcare workers that are putting themselves out there in these trying times, I think uh, they deserve a, a big round of applause and all the help that we can give them. Um, as Bill was saying, it, it is very encouraging to see how our community has come together to be able to help one another for those that are less fortunate that can't get out or don't have the resources to take care of some of the things themselves, how we've come together to help each other. It's encouraging, it's enlightening, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you, Dan. Jim Adderholt, any comments? I just say thank you to the outgoing counselors. Uh, I have a much better sense of the massive time and commitment that you all have given to the town of Fort Myers Beach, having gotten into this these last few months. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, I would also say that the town has been blessed to have a very special person as mayor, uh, particularly during these difficult times. <laughs> and I thank you all for your service. I, as someone who's relatively new to the island, uh, you all have been extremely kind to me and uh, been very gracious with your counsel and advice and appreciative of everything that you've done. And I wish you all Godspeed. Thank you, Jim. Um, if you all don't mind, I have uh, sp some specific people I'd really like to thank. You know, it goes without saying, Joanne, as Joanne said, and everyone sort of echoed, you know, our staff is, um, is just quite extraordinary. But I really just want to talk about these last three weeks uh, that have been so, I mean, it's been a pressure pot. And I'd like to start with Roger. Um, Roger, you have advocated for the town of Fort Myers Beach in such a strong, strong way. Uh, at times, I'm glad you haven't been on some of the phone calls because uh, you are, uh, you know, you are a great cheerleader, and your advice has been so extraordinarily helpful. And your advocacy for the safety of our residents uh, started early on before we ever even had our first special meeting. So for everything you have done to keep this community safe, Roger, I thank you. Um, Don, thank you for uh, all of the help that you have been every five seconds, me texting you or saying, can we do this? Is this legal? Don't tell me if it's legal, just tell me if we can do it. I appreciate your tolerance and, uh, and your help. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Daphne, she's not on this, but Daphne has been such a, a resource for me, including she's an early riser, so it, six o'clock in the morning, I'd send her a text and she'd say, hell, don't text me, just call me. So <laughs> those of you who know Daphne could hear her saying that. She's been a tremendous, tremendous resource and I appreciate her and I appreciate my newfound friendship with Daphne. Um, Michelle and Amy, you know, Michelle, you are everyone's ace in the hole if they're lucky enough to have you there. And uh, you certainly have been mine. So thank you for that and Amy, everything you have done to get us up and operating like this digitally in this weirdness world. Uh, thank you so much for everything both of you have 
helped uh, all of us with, especially these last three weeks. I know it's all been kind of on the fly, but thank you. Um, Donna and Ava at the front desk, you know, they're the first faces of, um, uh, that anybody gets. And you couldn't ask for two kinder, more pleasant, more agreeable, lovely women. And their efforts have been so appreciated, especially in these very stressful days where they've had people calling and um, complaining and uh, worried about everything. Um, Doug and Todd and Nello and and Harry and Kevin and all the base guys. Uh, you cleared the beach and, uh, and no one thought that was possible. Early on, it was like, this is gonna be impossible. But your kindness and your clear headedness with people who are obstinate is so appreciated and your work continues to help all of us. Of course, Chelsea has been right there at the forefront of everything, trying to get things done. Um, Thank you all. I know I'm going to miss somebody, but uh, with, your help has just been extraordinary. Um, Joanne, I want to thank you for Stormwater and TPI, because without you, those, those projects wouldn't have come to where they came. Uh, you. you know, you were the swing vote early on, your first meeting on Stormwater, and I know that was difficult for you. And then in the TPI case, you were pivotal in that uh, in that case. We wouldn't have gotten the project that we ended up with without you, Joanne. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you um, very much, Bruce. I won't ever hear the word data again without thinking about you. Um, <laughs> you've had an uncanny way of looking at the little pieces and the global picture at the same time, and I'm happy to um, have made a friendship with you and Diane. And I really appreciate uh, appreciate have appreciated your input tremendously. Thank you. Rex, thank you, Bruce. Uh, Rex, uh, you have a capacity for compassion for the human condition like nobody I ever knew. I was talking to somebody the other day when you came down to visit my family when we were down in the Keys after you had been to the walk or whatever you were doing for all the kids that were detained in Homestead. Um, that, uh, that capacity is just extraordinary and everyone sees it in the community for all the work you do for those less fortunate. And of course your friendship, well, I don't need to say anything more about that, Rex. Um, Murphy, it has been so great to sit beside you again at that dais and talk about things that happened back in the day that are still happening today. And I don't use that expression anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good. But uh, it is, um, uh, you know, I love you like a brother, and I, uh, I know that you and Rex are going to be super successful with the rest of these three fine gentlemen who I congratulate uh, in a heartfelt way for your, the class with which you ran your campaigns, especially you, Dan, and, um, and the, the promise that you hold for our town. Uh, they're very lucky to have you. We all are very lucky to have you. Uh, so I guess, um, you know, certainly not, not last, uh, the, the community of Fort Myers Beach has done something that uh, is really quite extraordinary. The, um, the compliance that we've gotten from day one, uh, even, even canceling the shrimp festival, you know, that seemed like such a monumental decision just a few weeks ago. And it turned out it was just the beginning of many steps we needed to take. But uh, I appreciate everyone's support. Uh, Lord knows I've appreciated the little notes and letters and cards and, and things that have arrived, arrived to what I call my portal to the world, my front porch. Uh, thank you to everyone who has participated in our meetings over the last six years, who will continue to participate as this new council moves forward. I think that, um, I think that you'll all be very impressed as you get to know these three new council members. They're very fine people. And I hope you will support them as you have us. Um, and last but not least, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Oh. Hey, uh, just give me one second.
It's been an honor. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't had no idea this would happen. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I was so prepped. Damn it. Uh, anyhow, it's been an honor to serve as mayor of this town, and especially these last three weeks, to, to lead this effort and to have all of you support every step of the way that we've taken. I can't thank you enough for it. It's been a privilege and an honor I will never forget. Okay, now, all that said and done, and please uh, excuse me for that moment of, uh, of <laughs> uncalled for emotion. Here we go, next item. Certification of the election results. Uh, it is my pleasure to ask for a motion to adopt resolution 2012. Certify. Would you like me to read the resolution? Oh, Michelle, I'd love for you to do that. Thank you. Resolution number 20-12, a resolution of the town council yeah, of Fort Myers Beach, Florida, certifying the results of the 2020 town election for seats three, four, and five, chair of amendments, determining council members' assignments, and providing an effective date. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Michelle. Um, to adopt resolution 20 12. Thank you, Second. Roxanne. There's a motion by Council Member Hassefrost to adopt resolution 20 12, certifying the results of the 2020 town election, and seconded by Council Member Champ. Is there any discussion on this? Yes, I'd just like to welcome the new councillors and wish them fair winds. Oh, very nice, very nice fair winds. Anyone else have any comments or discussion on the motion to approve resolution 20-12? Hearing none, uh, Michelle, do I need to roll call or something this? I don't think so. It's your option. Okay, well, let's just do that for the heck of it. My last little roll call vote. Maker of the motion, Rexanne. Yes. And Joanne. Aye. Bruce. Yes. Ray. Aye. And I vote yes, and so that is a unanimous uh, vote. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda, John, I, I do this next one too, don't I? And then I then we bug out. Is that right? Yeah. Bug out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so the next item is the inauguration of the new council members. And the first one in seat three is Dan Allers. Hey, Dan, FYI, back when we actually ran for seats, seat three was the first, very first seat that I held. So uh, I hope it brings you good luck. It certainly did me. Um, okay, so Dan Allers, Michelle? I, Dan Allers. I, Dan Allers. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support protect and defend that I will support uh, <laughs> that I will support protect and defend the Constitution and government of the United States and of the state of Florida the Constitution of the United States and the state of Florida that I am duly qualified to hold office that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the state under the Constitution of the state and that I will well and faithfully perform the duties. And that I will well and faithfully perform the duties. Of Fort Myers Beach Town Council. Of Fort Myers Beach Town Council. On which I am now about to enter, so help me God. In which I'm now about to enter, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations. Dan. Congratulations, Dan. Bravo. Uh, the and next one mentioned is, earlier, excuse me, ahead. I'm sorry. No, as go mentioned ahead. earlier, stop in and sign this. Certainly. Uh, council member. In seat four is Mr. Jim Adderholt. Aye. Is it Jim or James? You, you de determine. Jim is fine. Aye, Jim Adderholt. Aye, Adderholt. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear that I will support, protect, and defend that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution and government of the United States, the Constitution and government of the United States, and of the state of Florida, and of the state of Florida, 
that I am duly qualified to hold office. I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the state. Under the Constitution of the state. And that I will well and faithfully perform the duties. And that I will well and faithfully perform the duties. Of Fort Myers Beach Town Council. Of Fort Myers Beach Town Council. On which I am now about to enter, so help me God. On which I am now about to enter, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you. Bravo. Congratulations, Jim. Okay, seat five. This is the oath of office for Mr. Bill Veach. I, Bill Veach, or William. I, I can just read it if it's if it's legal that way. Um, it is absolutely I, legal. Okay, I, Bill Veach, do solemnly swear that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution and government of the United States and the state of Florida, that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the state, and I will well and faithfully perform the duties of the town council of the town of Fort Myers Beach, on which I am now about to enter, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bill. Congratulations, Bill. You guys are gonna do a wonderful job for this town, and I'm so happy you all decided to run. Thank you. Thank you. Any okay. shoes to fill? Well, you're, you're just, they're just different shoes. Yours are, yours are great. You don't worry about it. Um, okay, so uh, I think that finishes our job, Joanne and Bruce. And yes, thank uh, you. so we will, uh, John, should we, um, should we leave the council right now? Or should we leave this yeah. or? Uh, you, you can you can continue to participate or or, or show up, and then we'll um, at at the end, um, I guess, future meetings. You'll just uh, call in like uh, um, other residents and participate in the public comment section. Uh, but otherwise, you can stay uh, if you want. That's up to you. I'm just. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going just to. Gonna, I'm going to stay. sign. I'm and I'm going. I'm going to sign out so I don't interfere. I'm going to sit and have a cup of coffee and enjoy watching the new council do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. I'm just going to stay on here just to see uh, the next item. That's all. And then I then I'll then I'll leave. I won't have any not another word from me though. Zip it. Zipped. Done. Finito. Okay. okay. All right. I'm out of here. Yes. Bye. Okay. I I've all lost right. uh, I've lost my video here, so I can't really see you all. But uh, you can hear me. You can hear me fine. And you can see me. Okay. Okay. We'll get on with the next item, which is. Uh, Item eight, which is the sele selection of mayor and vice mayor. So right now I will open up the floor for nominations for the position of mayor. Are there any nominations for mayor? Uh, I would like to nominate vice mayor Ray Murphy. Okay, one for Murphy. Are there any other nominations? Yeah, I would like to uh, nominate uh, Jim Adderall. I may. Okay. Uh, I, I would. I would respectfully, uh, although it's much appreciated, I would respectfully decline that nomination. But thank you. Okay, Jim has uh, declined his nomination. Are there any further nominations? Going once, going twice. Okay. We'll close the nominations. We'll vote on um, Murphy for mayor. All in favor of Murphy for mayor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Murphy is uh, named mayor of the uh, town of Fort Myers Beach. I'd like to thank you all very much for your uh, support in that uh, in that area. It's uh, indeed an honor to sit as uh, chairman of uh, of this council. I'm looking forward to it very much, and uh, and of course it is indeed an honor to serve as uh, as mayor of the town of Fort Myers Beach, my hometown. So I thank you all for that, and I thank the people of Fort Myers Beach for putting me in this position to uh, to serve, which I look forward to and have enjoyed over the years. So thank you very much for that. With that being said, we'll uh, we'll take I will take nominations now for the position of vice mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I would like to respectfully nominate Rexanne Hassenfrost as vice mayor. Thank you, Jim. Are there any other nominations for uh, vice mayor? Hearing none, we'll close the, uh, the nominations. All in favor of Rexanne Hassefrost for vice mayor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Roxanne, congratulations. You're the vice mayor of Fort Myers Beach again. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations, Roxanne. Thanks to both. I hope to be of assistance to you in any way I can. Thank you. Right. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, you're going to help have to help me with this, Michelle. Be my pleasure. I have two that have been submitted through the public comment email. Um, okay. Would you like me to read those now? Yes, please. The first is from ALSCHWARTZ565 at gmail.com. I have been coming here for many years during the winter months. Oh, the subject is mooring field. I have been coming here for many years during winter months. I don't know what you are trying to accomplish by clearing the mooring field. Things to consider. One, voters that pay here spend money at all of the businesses. Two, spend efforts on the derelict boats. Three, spend efforts on removing the bums, sleeping at the dinghy dock and using foul language. I know I can't have my wife walk near the dinghy dock after dark. Four, if you think you are going to make this a place for super yachts to come and anchor, you are wrong. Five, what is the $312 deposit for? If you continue with this process, I will not return. I know now six other boats that will not come here with the current situation. I think you need someone heading this operation that knows about cruising. The people who are at the mooring field are good upstanding people who choose this lifestyle, not all a bunch of bums. Al Schwartz and then his phone number, 906-322-0410. Thank you, Mr. Swartz, for those comments. Uh, next, Michelle. This is from Jay and Catherine Light. The subject is persons living on boats asked to leave mooring field. I received a copy of the letter notifying our Fort Myers Beach mooring field patrons that live on their boats that they are going to have to leave the mooring field when their lease expires this month. I think it is wrong that we are kicking out the patrons that are already here. Are other marinas and mooring fields doing this? Where are these people going to go? My concern is in many cases, the boat is the person's home. The governor has said we are to shelter in place and this is their place. I fully support not letting any new, bo new boats in with people living on them until the COVID-19 situation is over. Again, I think forcing people to leave at this time is wrong as well as mean spirited. I hope this decision can be revisited and changed. Catherine Light, Chair, Anchorage Advisory Committee for the Town of Fort Myers Beach. That concludes the comments I've received. Okay, thank you for those comments, Catherine and Jay. Uh, it appears there's someone in the, uh, the, the waiting room. Okay, let's go to that. Caller is on. Uh, caller with the number 863-255-3213. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, Jason, go ahead. No, <laughs> I'm here for the next for the other issues. Okay. Is there someone else that wants to uh, to speak? Doesn't appear to be Mayor. Okay. Well, then we'll uh, we'll move on. If that's the end of public comment. Okay, the next item is, uh, let's see, we've done the local achievements, advisory committees, items and reports. There's none scheduled. Or is there anything here today that would prove that wrong? Is there none scheduled here? That's correct, ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, you all want to take a little uh, five minute break or do you want to go right into the public hearings here? I'm ready to go. I'm ready. All right. Okay. Fine. I was hoping I'd get five to uh, overcome my technical difficulties, but uh, as long as you can hear me, that's fine. Okay. Ray, if, you want, if you want to take a break, sure, take a break. I, I just uh, I just can't see you all on the screen, but uh, I don't have to see you. I know what you look like. So what <laughs> you on the top right-hand side of your screen, Mayor? It's the speaker view or gallery? The speaker uh, view. Or gallery. I'm all, the, Cheryl's, uh, God love her. her, her computer is all over the place. But anyhow, we'll just continue on here. So we'll go to uh, the public hearing is the uh, the second reading and final public hearing of ordinance 
20-08 of the LDC text amendment water body setbacks. I'll read that. Ordinance 20-08, an ordinance of the town of Fort Myers Beach, Florida, amending section 34-638 entitled minimum setbacks of the Fort Myers Beach land development code, revising the setbacks from water bodies, providing for several severability, codification, Scribner's errors, conflicts of law, and providing for an effective date. This is the second and final hearing for ordinance 20-08 of the LDC text amendment to water body setback section 34-638. The public hearing is open. Uh, town attorney, did you wanna add anything to this? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I uh, welcome to all the new um, council members. Um, the, you all um, may recall that this was heard obviously before the current event. Um, staff had made some changes that they believe are necessary to make the regulations consistent with, uh, internally consistent with other sections of the code. Uh, they made changes between first and second reading, specifically at the request of the of the town council. Uh, I believe those are found, if I can get to the agenda page. Um, on page 43, I believe, of the uh, agenda packet. And they're shown by um, a strikeout and underline, the double underline. If you may recall, uh, Mr. Mayor, the particular issue was the distance from the shoreline. Yes. And let the record reflect the, it has been properly advertised. Yes. Um, it's uh, page 43, a new subsection four and renumbered five. Um, if property lines encroach into the water body, then no more than five feet shall be applied to the setback measurement. That's the only change. Very good. Uh, is there, uh, did you have to ask for ex parte on this or no? Uh, no, no need for ex parte. This is a, um, an ordinance, a legislative uh, action that uh, not quasi judicial nature. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, is there anybody uh, anybody uh, waiting to comment on this? Michelle, is there anybody waiting to comment on this? No, Mayor, there doesn't appear to be any public comment for this item. Okay, okay. All right, well, uh, is there a motion, is there any motion from the council to, uh, to move this? I, I have a correction that I found uh, okay. before we move it. Uh, Dan Hughes pointed out during the LPA meeting that there was a word um, that should not be stricken on page 43, the word changes in 3B1. And evidently that error didn't get picked up when he mentioned it. I think it's important to the meaning of the statute. Uh, so uh, in other words, if the, if the body of water is subject to title, that's correct. The word changes was inadvertently struck out. Thank you very much, Councillor, for picking that up. Okay. Anything, any other uh, changes or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve this ordinance. I'll make a motion to pass Ordinance 2020-80 20, 20 with the correction that Councilor Haas Ross brought up. 20-08, okay. 20-08, I'll second. Oh, oh, wait, sorry, my bad. Very good, it's been moved and second. Is there any discussion among the council? So just for clarification, John, um, this motion basically uh, puts the the setback based on where the, uh, the water body is as opposed to where the surveyed property line is. That is correct. It's to adopt a, a standard um, measuring stick, no pun intended, uh, for um, waterfront properties so we as staff can use a, a, an appropriate um, um, baseline across the board. Okay, and the, the term when it says um, the following in, in 3B where it says the following will also be used, that means it's the more stringent of the um, 
of the criteria, right? Correct. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I'll call the question then. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, yep. it needs to be roll call. Is this a roll call? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Councilman Allers. Aye. Councilman Adderhall. Aye. Councilman Veach. Aye. Vice Mayor Hassafas. Yes. And, and uh, Mayor Murphy, aye. Okay, the ordinance passes unanimously. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to the, uh, the second public hearing, which is uh, the second reading of ordinance 20-09 the amended vessel control and water safety. Ordinance 20-09, an ordinance of the town of Fort Myers Beach, Florida, repealing article two of chapter 32 of the Fort Myers Beach Land Development Code and section 18-34 of the Code of Ordinances of Fort Myers Beach concerning vessel control and water safety and establishing a new article five of chapter 16 of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Fort Myers Beach entitled Boating Restricted Areas, Vessel Control, and Water Safety, providing for severability, codification, Scrivener's errors, conflicts of law, and, a, and an effective date. Okay, the uh, public hearing is open. Are there any, com are there any uh, public comments uh, waiting, Michelle? No, Mayor, I have no requests. Okay. Council, uh, does anyone care to move this item? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we... 20-09. Okay, go ahead. Uh, either, either one, go ahead, please. Go ahead, Rexanne. I was just going to say I will move the adoption of uh, Ordinance-20-09. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Discussion. Uh, yeah, Roger, would you, um, as you did in the first reading, would you go through what exactly this is doing? There's been some question. People think that this is uh, actually changing some of the, the speed zones in the back bay. Could you explain to, to the public? exactly what they're reading correct this is um originated out of the um uh, many uh, phone calls and emails and uh, public comment you all received with regard to the fwc's uh change in policy in terms of uh speed limitations in the back bay um what happened for a historical perspective for the new counselors is that when the county was going to replace long-standing signs, they found that it was discovered that those signs no longer met the criteria and therefore removed, which uh, generated that public comment to you all. As a result, staff was, was requested to look into the FWC requirements and initiate procedures to implement that which we can to uh, try to protect the speed limits in the back bay. This ordinance, the second reading of this ordinance is the first step in that process. It um, does not necessarily cover all the areas that uh, concerns were raised upon because of the FWC's uh, stringent criteria, but we're covering as large an area as we can. Secondarily, um, because of the um, uh, approaching managing season, uh, there are certain seasonal signs that do go up to, to further that effort to protect the speeds in the back bay, but that's an independent um, mechanism uh, from this ordinance. But uh, the combined effect is to better protect the back bay uh, from, from speeding and get it back to where it was, where people were used to. Although it does not cover 100% of the area is yet because they don't qualify under the FWC's criteria. Thank you. It's a vast improvement over doing nothing. Thank you, Roger. And uh, I would just like to congratulate uh, you, Roger, and the staff for the uh, for really the lightning speed turnaround on this item. It seems just uh, like uh, 
several weeks ago that uh, this was brought to us by uh, by the residents down there. Uh, and uh, this is a very, very fast turnaround on this. And as you say, it's uh, it's what we can do right now. And uh, maybe we can do some more in the future. But I want to thank you for that. Mr. Mayor, I just want to I appreciate your, your comments. I want to thank uh, Chad and Chelsea for working, collaborating on for to get moving forward. And we, and we do as well. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any other uh, any other discussion on the uh, the motion, Mr. Mayor? Just just for the sake of the public, Roger, would you kind of comment then on next steps chronologically? What will occur? What may occur? What what what's the timeline? Just so the public has some idea as to what's happening in the future as a result of this. Well, um, the, the this ordinance now will then go to the FWC for review. And upon their um, acceptance, uh, we they will uh, confirm the areas in which we can post signs in, and we will post signs in those areas, designate them as um, as reduced speed zones. So those are the, the subsequent steps. Independently, we are working with the folks in the area uh, that are not covered to educate them on how they could perhaps make modifications to their property use to allow coverage if they so wish to do that. Thank you. Uh, Roger, I have a question. Um, or maybe to Chad, are there any speed limits that will actually change with this or just just a way to protect us from having the same thing that happened down in the uh, Coon Key Channel from happening in other places? Mr. Roger. I'll let Chad chime in, Councillor, but um, we, had, we had an area that was covered by a speed limit and that sign was removed. We have some uh, long-standing boaters who, who understand the benefit and even though the signs have been removed, continue to operate their boats and vessels at that lesser speed. Uh, however, we do have others who, um, once the signs have been removed, hesitant to um, use all the horsepower on the back of their boat. So uh, this will force those people to get back into conformity for the areas that are covered in this ordinance. Okay, well, the, the question is because a good deal of the, um, of the Back Bay Channel is a year-round manatee zone. So it's already got reduced speed because of the manatee zone. The question is, are there any, so there are spots in this ordinance that we cover that are not part of that year round manatee zone? That's correct. All right. Any other discussion? Any other questions? If not, I'll call for the vote and we'll do a roll call again. Councilman Al Allers. Yes. Councilman Iderhall. Aye. Councilman Beach. Aye. Vice Mayor Hassafar. Yes. And uh, Mayor Murphy, aye. The ordinance passes unanimously. Thank you very much. The next item is the uh, final public comment. Uh, I'm seeing by text here that uh, we have one person waiting. Am I correct there, uh, Madam Clerk? Well, Mayor, I. I'm not aware that there's anyone waiting. I know that Catherine Light had been in the waiting room, but I understand she is now gone. Well, let's give her a moment to come back. It's, it, I've got the uh, text that she was waiting, and also Amy sent me a text that uh, someone else was waiting as well, and that was probably her. So let's give her a min minute to see if she uh, gets back on. If, uh, if she doesn't, why, we'll move on. But... Uh, I tell you what, why don't we just move on and then we'll, if, if she comes back, we'll, we'll certainly go back to her. And uh, I, I, I know it, her comments are pertaining to the first item of the town manager's items. So we'll just start with the town manager's items and if Catherine gets through or anybody else gets through, we'll go back to them. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Sure. Okay. Roger, uh, town manager's items. Thank you, sir. So the first item is a uh, discussion of the uh, Mooringfield lease issue. What uh, what we had done is we said that anyone whose lease expired um, would not be renewed. We, we felt that that was consistent with what we were asking all the um, 
on-land properties to do, be they hotels, motels, bed and breakfasts, uh, vacation rentals. Uh, and um, it, it came to our attention that some people objected to that. Uh, we felt the appropriate thing to do was to delay that decision to till today to allow the town council to weigh in and determine whether or not they wish to um, allow people to enter into new leases on the mooring field uh, if I assume if they were there previously or last month or whatever the case may be. So um, that is why this item is on the agenda. Um, and um, I am welcoming any suggestions and or comments the council may have and the staff will implement those as soon as uh, we have a sense of what the majority of the council is. Okay, since I know uh, from the last meeting that this is on the, uh, the vice mayor's mind here, why don't we let uh, Rexanne start off the conversation and, and then uh, we'll let the other members uh, uh, voice their opinions as well. So Rexanne, you, you, you may have the floor. Thank you. Uh, part of the confusion here is at the last Anchorage Advisory Committee meeting, uh, folks were informed that they had to come in every month to sign a new lease. So even those folks that were longtime residents um, are under the impression that this applies to basically everyone, not people whose leases had expired, because basically they were said everybody became a month-to-month -month lease at last month's meeting. Um, in addition, um, you know, the many emails and uh, conversations I've had with folks about this uh, indicate that there are people who live in the mooring field that are indeed residents of the town of the Fort Myers Beach. They are registered voters. This is their home. So by, by sending them out, we are actually, in my opinion, in violation of what the governor and others have asked us to do um, to shelter in place. Uh, they are, except to come in to get groceries, uh, more isolated from us than the rest of the people around us are. Uh, so I would definitely be in favor of, of letting everyone who is already in the mooring field who wants to stay, allow them to stay. Um, and I, I know that uh, there is the uh, maritime common law idea of safe harbor, which is that uh, we're all supposed to be of assistance to someone who is in distress in a boat uh, to offer them assistance. So I think we do need to have a discussion of, even about the idea. Initially, I thought we shouldn't allow any new people in, but having considered that that provision, uh, well, it's not actually a provision, I believe it's more common law. There, there are some references to it in the federal code. And, and I know it's not an ironclad thing. I've read up on it. Uh, it's not ironclad that we have to offer safe harbor, but it is something that is commonly done in the maritime world. So um, I, I would like to hear a discussion from my fellow council members about whether we should not only keep the people that are already there, but possibly open it to others. Okay, before we get to, before we, yeah, before we get to the other members, uh, excuse me, Roger. Uh, sure. I understand that uh, Catherine Light is back on the line now, so we'll... Uh, We'll allow Catherine to speak. Catherine Light is the uh, the chair chair lady of the uh, Anchorage Advisory Committee, and uh, also very uh, very familiar with the uh, goings on in the mooring field. Uh, so if we can get Catherine back on, and then uh, then we'll we'll get back to the other members. Please. Thank you for having me. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. I, I just want to um, agree with everything Roxanne said. I, I have sent all of you the letter and my feelings about this and certainly reiterate what um, Roxanne said about that we, uh, we have our boat in wet storage in the mooring field. We do not live on it, so we're not affected by this, but, but we have to go in every month um, it just transitions, I think, in February, late January, February, that everybody, we no longer are able to have six-month leases, so everyone has is up for renewal 
whether they live on their boat or not this month. Apparently you can pay many months in advance, but most people are not going to do that. They can't really afford to do that. So, um, and um, I, I certainly feel, as I said in my public comment here this morning, that these are their pe the people's homes. They have really nowhere else to go. Um, I have a feeling that if they're, they're uh, made to leave the mooring field, they're gonna go anchor out in front of the Coast Guard station. So um, I think we have a better, they have much safer harbor if they're in our mooring field. And um, you know, there, I don't think there are that many of them. So my concern is uh, that they're, this is their home and this is where they are. Uh, excuse me, I know this is sort of out of line we don't typically uh, ask questions of the, uh, of the public comment, but, but if you'll uh, humor me for a moment, I'm going to ask you, Catherine, how many do you think there are out there at, at uh, these? Uh, I'm not really, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I think there might have been about a half a dozen, but there may be more. Um, Roger may have more of an idea or Chelsea um, of the exact number now because the response I got back from Roger was that there were some other people that came in um, after uh, in the last couple of weeks. So there may be more people than a half dozen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is anything else, Catherine, before we disco you here? <laughs> I don't have anything unless somebody else has another question of me. Well, Again, that's out of or that's out of the usual, but I'll, yes. I'll I'll afford that. If anyone would like to ask Catherine a question, feel free to go ahead right now. Yeah, I have a question. Um, of the of the people that are there, any idea how dependent they are on the shared resources, the land the land based resources? Well, um, certainly they would use the dinghy dock. You know, if, if they would need to come in to get groceries or prescriptions or that kind of thing. So as far as the shower or the laundry, I, I would guess they might use the laundry. I don't know that everybody uses the showers, restrooms. Okay. But the dinghy dock is certainly, certainly a vital place for them to come ashore to, to do whatever necessities they need to do. And Catherine, you can verify if this is true. If we force people out and they go a short distance away and more, they're still going to find some way to come into town to get groceries. So well, they're, going to, they're going to have to come some, somewhere. Um, and the dinghy, dock, the dinghy dock is a public facility. It's not strictly for the mooring field. It's right. for so, anyone. That way, everybody will still continue to use the dinghy dock rather than going, say, to the mound house and trying to get in there in order to get right. groceries. They shouldn't go there, but they probably will if they have no other way to get food. They'll find some dock to pull up to so that they can come in to get food. Correct. It seems They're to me. They're to come in to get food. I mean, you know, most people are not going to have a month or two's worth of food on their boat if they're staying in the mooring field. If you were cruising around the world, yes, but most people are not going to have that much on their boats. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have anything for Catherine? No. Thank you, Catherine, for joining us. And uh, Thank you for having me. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Roger, before we... Uh, get down to this what what are the uh, just so everybody knows here uh what are the objections of the staff as to why these uh leases should not be renewed and, th and this isn't a criticism it's just a uh, a question well there's there's two elements to that mr mayor one is is that um if the if the boats are in the in the mooring field we have to continue to service them in terms of pump outs that means our staff will be having interaction with those people and uh, we'll have to develop some type of, uh, I guess, protocol to try to protect our staff um, and protect, uh, create a social distancing type of scenario so that they would be protected from that fairly close interaction with the uh, boat owner. Is that plausible? Well, uh, uh, 
we can try to create some criteria that we, that we feel would offer them this, the best possible protection. And then of course, if, whatever, if the boat owner didn't cooperate, we would just not pump them out, I guess is okay. what transpire there. All right, what else? Um, the second, the second point, and, and I, I, I wasn't at the um, Anchorage Advisory Committee, um, and I'm just relating back to the Vice Mayor's comment. Uh, I think um, there are a lot of people, I think it is true that there are a lot of people who, who tend to operate on a month to month basis because perhaps it fits in their finances better than um, executing a six month agreement or whatever even though it, it may be cheaper laying out that amount of money in one lump sum may be more difficult. So people do come in monthly and when they do come in monthly, because it's a new agreement, they are now being asked to execute a new lease. Um, however, um, just to be clear, um, our mooring field is not intended as a permanent facility the way uh, our rules and regulations are currently written, of course, uh, the Anchorage Committee and the Council can consider changing that prospectively. Uh, the other point is, is that uh, when we saw an influx of people from other public marinas uh, that were, were being closed, um, that raised some question in our minds. And, and then last but not least, um, Wait, 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 one, one second. There, what, there was, was there an influx of other people coming to ours? Yes, sir. That's what I've been advised from the marina staff. What does that mean, an influx? Like I mean, influx. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like thousands. It wasn't thousands. No, well, I don't. I know thousands, but I mean, we're, well, okay. I'll take your word for it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um. And then, and then, last but not least, and this is just purely perception. Um. You know, we we felt that the council took a very a strong action with respect to um, uh, leases and and um, uh, of properties, whether they be daily, uh, or week or weekly, uh, and uh, month up to monthly. And um, we felt that it would seem a little disingenuous for us to say, "Well, we're going to do. It. We're going to be our. We're going to be a landlord, but you can't." So um, those were the things that. Uh, entered into our decision making process of why we were saying when people's leases expired that um, we, we were not gonna renew them. But uh, this is not a black and white issue per se, which is why um, we felt that it was fair, it was appropriate to bring it for the council and give you a chance to, to weigh in and set the policy. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to ask the new members right now your opinion on this matter because I think I know where Rex Van stands, right? and I, of course I know my opinion. So I'm going to start with uh, you, Dan Allers. Uh, how do you feel on this uh, this item? Uh, can I ask a couple questions of Roger first, Mayor? Sure. Yes, um, you can. Sure. Uh, going back to Mr. Schwartz's um, public comment earlier, he had a couple questions that I I would like to to get some answers on. Uh, one of them was the deposit. I think it was three hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, why is that being collected now? Uh, my, is my understanding that it wasn't collected before, but when it switched to month to month, that it is now? Uh, that's one question. Um, and my other question is, well, why the change from six months to one month? And uh, who is who is responsible for it? Is it Austin? Is he the harbor master, I mean, or is it Matanzas? So if some, my question is, if someone, whether it's six months or one month. If they, their lease is up, who, who's responsible for telling them they either need to re renew or evict, or, or evict or move on, I guess we'll say. Okay, uh, well, um, the Matanzas takes their direction from, from Chelsea and Austin. So um, they're not setting any policy, just to be clear. Our, pol our, our problem though was, um, we were having cases where people were, where Matanzas was not uh, promptly notifying us of people whose leases were expiring. And um, which was creating a, a, a collection issues and in some cases uncollectible funds because 
person stayed beyond their lease term and then left without paying us, which is why we went to the, the policy of a deposit and why we went to, if you sign up for six months, you renew your lease every six months, just like you would do on land. But if you sign up for a month, you renew your lease every month because just like you would do on land. Um, and the intent there was to make sure that oh, we minimize the collection situations because so many times uh, once people went beyond their lease, it was, it was difficult to collect their money because many of them just would sign up for period X, stay X in two weeks or three weeks and then leave. Um, so that's why we, we changed the policy. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, is there is there a way similar to the water bill that they could, since they have to do it every month now, or we're suggesting that they do it every month, that they can go onto the town's website and renew it without having to physically go into Mantanzas and, and do it that way? Yes, we've recently put up a way for people to execute their paperwork um, online. So we've done that. Um, payment is not always that easy because not everyone pays by credit card, but um, with respect to executing the paperwork, yes. Okay. Um, and then one more thing, you, you'd mentioned that the, the purpose of the mooring field was not to be a permanent resident solution. What is, so then what would be the maximum amount of time they'd be allowed to renew their one month or six month leases? My understanding is we have a current limitation in our management plan of six months. Uh, well then, you know, I, I, I echo some of the same things that Council Member Hossfrost mentioned. Um, I believe if they were there uh, before this all started, they should be allowed to, to stay there. Uh, we, we've been preaching, uh, you know, social distancing. I can't think of a, a better place to social distance than on your boat well away from other people. Um, and I agree that they're going to they're gonna come and still use the same resources, whether it be Publix or, or riding their bike down as any other resident would on the island. So. Uh, I'm, I'm in line with, with Councilmember Hossfrost. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilman uh, Adderholt, do you have any comments on this item? One clarification, Roger. So, so people can sign up for, they have a choice between a one month lease or a six month lease. Is that, is that my understanding? Yes, sir. So the folks that, is the policy now to evict folks, not evict or ask them to leave if they just upon the renewal of their lease. So is that how it's working? Yes, sir. So, so some folks may have a six month lease who will be unimpacted by this, but those who have shifted to a month to month lease would be impacted. Is that fair? The ones on a month to month lease whose uh, lease expired, um, say last week, we extended them to this week to allow this meeting to occur to get council input. But other than that, you're correct. Whatever the date their lease expires would have been the date we would have asked them to leave. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm very sympathetic to the vice mayor's concerns, and I would support allowing those folks who are already here to stay. Thank you, Jim. Um, Councilman Beach, do you have any comments on this? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, one of, one of the things that really concerns me is is the idea that other marinas are closing and that ours would remain open to, to new visitors um, or new tenants. Um, you know that the that tourist towns have the highest rates of infection in the country. Uh, recently, I was reading a story that a, a ski town in Utah had the highest rates of infection because they tend to be a gathering spot for people all over, all over the place. The reason why we closed so much of the island was because we were worried about this. Um, now, I do understand this is a special circumstance, particularly when these people are already here and are voting members of the island. I am concerned about the shared resources and the risk of contagion from that and the risk to staff. Um, I, would, I would support this if we could come up with a, a good way to mediate those effects, uh, either um, go through a schedule of using the facilities where they can be cleaned between, um, and, and extra extra cleaning on the dinghy dock uh, and just just and limiting the number of new people coming in so we're not we're not getting people from from different locations bringing potential um, coronaviruses into our community and putting our people at risk 
If I could, I uh, could I respond to Bill? Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, I don't believe that the pump out is the only option that's available to these folks. Marinas are considered essential services. I know people are out boating. I believe the marinas are operating. I think that our cruisers can go to a marina for a pump out. And um, now, but what about the shared facilities, like things like the showers and uh, and laundry, where you have a lot of hands touching the same the same thing? That is a concern. My my concern is if. if if we're going to allow the people that are staying, how it goes back to what I asked you earlier, Roger, how are we keeping an eye on the mooring field to make sure no new people are coming in to go to what Bill was saying as far as uh, more people coming to the island? If you're there, you're allowed to stay, but new people are not allowed to come. How, how often or who is checking on that to make sure nobody's just hooking up to a ball and we don't even know they're there? Well, our, our, our staff, checks when they do the pump outs for any unregistered uh, vessels. With respect to um, whether the mooring field is open to new uh, boaters, that's part of your policy discussion today. Our, our uh, the letter that the vice mayor alluded to said that there would be no new people. But now the question is, what do we do with the existing people? Unless you all change that policy, but our, our our letter that you referred to basically said that there'd be no new people, and we wouldn't be renewing um, folks. But if you want us to renew the, renew the existing people, we will. Okay, it sounds to me what I'm hearing from the council is is that uh, we want to continue to allow the, uh, the existing tenants, shall we say to remain with with no new boaters to come in and also to take uh, exceptionally good care as to the uh, the hygiene and uh, clean outs and etc of the uh, existing tenants uh, if, if there's uh that seems to me to be the uh, the majority opinion here today so that that sounds to me like the direction for uh, Roger. If there's anything, uh, if anybody has any objection to that, let, please let me know now and we'll we'll discuss it. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I was wondering, nobody knows how long this is gonna go on. Should it, should it carry on, hopefully not into hurricane season? Um, how are we gonna address the safe harbor issue if people need to find shelter to get out of the way of the storm? How will we go about addressing that? Well, it seems to me, and Roger and the, and the others can speak to this, but uh, it seems to me if you're going to stop it, you stop it. You, know, you don't allow any more to come in. I mean, we're trying to uh, minimize the uh, the, uh, the chance of any future infection. So we're going to, I would say, we, we just keep that uh, uh, prohibition in effect. And, uh, and, and when hurricane season comes, you know, God forbid people are out there or whatever, I mean, uh, I think the, I think the boating community is pretty resourceful. They'll they'll know where to go, and uh, and uh, and no, and I think they should understand uh, the limitations that we're imposing here. Uh, I'd, I'd have to respectfully disagree uh, about hurricane season. There there is the strong uh, maritime idea of offering safe harbor. Uh, the idea that there are people out there cruising now that aren't in a harborage. There are lots of boats out and about that people who live aboard and can continue to cruise. During a storm, they need to find some place to come in and find safe harbor. So I would hate to, to say that we have prohibited that at this point. Okay. Uh, John? Any other, any other opinions on that? I think that if we, if we come to a situation where there is a storm in the middle of this, um, which is like everyone's worst case scenario, um, that that's something we deal with at the time. Because there, there is a difference between shelter from a storm and potential contagion. Okay. So hey, we'll Council Member, Vice yeah. Mayor Hasse-Frost, did you want me to comment? I was going to ask 
ask you if you had any comment on the idea of safe harbor during a hurricane. I think that in maritime law, that's pretty recognized. It, it, it is. However, as, as the, the, the manager indicated, um, you know, we use this um, piece of property for our mooring field pursuant to a state uh, submerged land lease. And we have a management agreement with the, the, the state that dictates how we can use this property. And so um, you know, to the extent, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going off of memory, um, but you know, it, we're not supposed to be in, in the event of a, of a hurricane. Uh, I believe that the mooring field is supposed to be vacated. That's not my understanding of what's happened in the past. We have not vacated. I, 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 I understand what may have happened in the past. I'm just simply saying the, the, the management agreement itself it specifies what we can and we can't do with the property. Uh, and um, I can circulate a copy to all of the, the council members um, um, after the meeting. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, John. Okay, well, for today's purposes, then we've. Uh, I think I think Roger, you you, uh, you have your direction here. I think the majority believes that the uh, the existing leases should be uh, should be renewed. The, the uh, people that there are allowed to stay; they won't be displaced. And uh, any any new people coming in now will be prohibited. And also, this this takes into effect that uh, uh, you're going to take abundant care with your uh, with your staff members and uh, to uh, to uh, to prevent any uh, any infection of 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 them by uh, by what's uh, by what uh, what work needs to be done out there in the uh, in the mooring field. So if that uh, if that sounds right to everybody, then we'll uh, we'll consider that direction for the town manager and move on to the next item. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, town manager. Your Mr. next item. Chair, members of the council, um, we just wanted to have a very brief discussion of whether we should um, make any adjustments to the council meeting schedule or continue with the past schedule. As it's been, um, council meetings on the first and third of Monday of the month, uh, management and planning sessions on the first Thursday of the month. And when I say the first, I mean the first full week of the month. So um, for the clerk and, and uh, staff planning and organizing purposes, we just wanted to get it clear, verified whether or not that was your intention to continue on that schedule or due to um, other commitments, the council would like to see us adjust that. The one comment I would have is that the Thursday m and frequently uh, conflicts with the TDC meeting, which is an important meeting for the town to have representation. Um, I believe it always occurs on the second, well, it usually occurs on the second Thursday of the month. Um, I don't know whether we would want to consider moving m and meetings to Friday to make sure that this doesn't keep happening. I, I don't really care, to tell you the truth, but uh, I had another question about the, uh, the regular meetings themselves. From, a, from the staff's point of view, uh, would, would there be any benefit to having the meetings on Tuesday instead of Mondays? I'm just throwing Mr. That Mayor, out. Um, the, adv the advantage of having the meetings on Tuesday versus Monday is that um, we, you know, we have, we have Monday as a work day to make last minute adjustments uh, to the, to the, um, the agenda um, versus um, over the weekend. Um, so, but if the council is comfortable with Mondays, all that means is if we were making an adjustment, it would be more verbal than in writing. We had Monday to work with you. We could prepare something in writing and get it to you, which is much more difficult for us to do over the weekends, but possible. Um, the other point with respect to uh, the vice mayor's comment, if the first Thursday of the month is a uh, or frequent conflict with the TDC, then maybe the council just wants to move it to the 
Thursday between the two uh, council meetings. Right. Um, that's not, that's not logical. Would avoid that conflict and uh, actually maybe beneficial to staff from the standpoint that we don't have two meetings in the same week. Okay. How does everybody feel about that idea of uh, Tuesday meetings? Is that the, the, the problem with the Thursday meeting is that it's the second Thursday is the TDC meeting and according to how the days of the week have lined up, sometimes we conflict and sometimes we don't. Moving it one week, it, we're still going to bump into the conflict part of the time maybe. I'm not sure. It also looks like the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council meets on Thursdays. I'd be okay with moving M&Ps to Friday just to, it doesn't seem like anybody else meets on Friday, so you have fewer conflicts. Yeah, the, it says on, the, on the, um, the, the blue sheet here that the, uh, the MPO meets on Fridays, the third Friday of the month. Would Wednesday in between meetings work? Wednesdays, we have other committees that are meeting. A Thursday, the third week about. of the month. What was that comment? I was just going to suggest, I'm just, it doesn't really matter to me, but I was thinking about Thursday, the third Thursday of the month, Madam Vice Mayor. That might work. If we, de if we declare it to be a specific week, then rather than a position, um, then it shouldn't conflict with the TDC. And I, I don't know how, but you, it would conflict with the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council, and I don't know much about that council, but it says here they meet the third Thursday of the month. Okay. Ray, was that something you were going to? That was Ray. Ray is a current, according to the sheet, Ray is a current uh, represent, re representative. Well, I can tell you the, the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council is not what it used to be. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry too much about that one. And, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> okay, well, let's get one of these done here. Uh, does anybody like the uh, the idea of Tuesday meetings as opposed to Monday for the staff? I would prefer Mondays because I've, I've kind of blocked out my future year. I haven't made any doctor's appointments on Mondays, etc. So I prefer to keep Mondays and Thursdays, just move the Thursday to the third Thursday. How does the rest of the council feel? You know, this might be good. This, this seems like it's an exercise where you have to lay out all these different commitments on a calendar and see what, what works through the, you know, extrapolate it out through the, uh, through the seasons and see, see what really works. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, then. Why don't we just leave it the way it is for right now, and then we'll, we'll, <clears throat> we'll muddle through it at a later date. How's that? <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. Okay, Roger, item C. Okay, counselors, I have some very good news for you and the community. Um, due to the hard work of all of the staff and, and the community members themselves, in terms of understanding the importance of uh, complying with our codes, our uh, inspection of the, um, by the CRS community rating system inspection team has resulted in um, a, uh, the town moving up potentially uh, two, two classes from class seven to class uh, five. The, uh, in the memo that's in your agenda, that means that the average savings to the community would be, uh, if we go to class five, is $2.284 million. Wow. Um, and depending upon your coverages, et cetera, um, that amount will vary from person to person, but as an average across everybody in the community, that represents a $364 savings. Um, but I do have to tell you that one of the items that we use to, to uh, gain that class, we understand is coming off the books. So this would not be a permanent reduction. 
we'll have to go in and try to find other credits that we can get prospectively. But um, when the uh, CRS folks, verification folks contacted us, we thought considering the, the times that we're in, it was a better decision to take the credit, the highest credit we were eligible for now and right. um, deal with any potential uh, increased costs in the future by continuing to work on the, um, the criteria so that maybe we can keep it, but if we lose it, we, we still would have been better off for gaining it for whatever period of time possibly two years we would have gained it for. Would we go back to seven then, or, or would we go up to six if that, when that comes off the books? Yeah, so every, every time they do it, it, you basically start at zero and rebuild. So um, one, one of the things that has helped us is that um, when they do a, what they do is they randomly pull um, development files and check for compliance based on how many they find in compliance. They will either pull a bigger sample or, or accept the initial sample. And um, that pretty much sets the criteria. So it's a lot of factors that could influence this. Our goal, of course, is to keep it as cost effective as we can um, for our, our folks. They change the rating system so it changes, so we have to look to see where we can get credits. So um, I can't tell you what the slide might be because it depends on what's going on two years from now. But they asked us if we wanted to basically state the same thing versus have the yo-yo effect, and I, I didn't think that that was a good idea. I thought that the credit that we can gain our taxpayers for two years was worthwhile taking, and we'll try to mitigate the, the yo-yoing in two years. Okay. Any other questions for the town manager? Mr. Mayor, I just say, Roger, that's a, that's a, if we weren't in the middle of a virus, you know, state of emergency, that is a major development and a great piece of news for our town. And I commend you and the staff for doing that. I would encourage you, uh, if, if the new PIO is coming on soon, that would be worthy of a press release and putting it on our website, letting people know if, specifically when this will come into effect, how they'll be impacted. It's a great story to tell, and I would encourage you to continue to tell the story. You're here. You're here. Good, Mayor, good idea. Yes, sir. Uh, council Idaho, members of the council, uh, Jenny Drexler arrived at town hall today to get checked in and orientated, and um, you will start to see um, our program for increasing our uh, public outreach start very shortly. We're getting her, you know, equipment and things of that nature, and that effort will be uh, kicked off very soon, as soon as she sort of gets the lay of the land. But um, Council well, Adderall's comment is very appropriate, and <laughs> we'll release that all shortly. Very good, very good. Okay, well, thank you very much for that report. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to the uh, town attorney's items. John? I'm muted there. Um, uh, no, nothing, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I was just checking with staff uh, to follow up on the issue of the um, uh, hurricane. Um, uh, and our management plan uh, with the state says, in the event the National Weather Service issues a tropical storm, or hurricane warning that includes Fort Myers Beach, the harbor master is authorized to open the anchorage to vessels in transit seeking safe harbor refuge. Such vessels are permitted to be secured in the anchorage under the direction of the harbor master. No rental fees will be charged for the duration of the storm. However, the registration with the harbor master is required. If conditions at the time of arrival preclude going ashore by dinghy to register vessel, operators must contact the harbor's master by radio or cell phone. Uh, note this waiver should in no way be construed as a recommendation that the Anchorage is the safest place to be in a storm. So that is the um, official language of the agreement between uh, the town and the state with regard to um, the mooring field during a tropical storm or hurricane. Thank Roger. you, John, for that clarification. May I ask a question, Mayor, real quick? 
Sure. Did, John, does the uh, does the town monitor the radio or just Matanzas? Um, I don't know the answer to that, uh, but I do know that staff is watching and um, maybe they can respond uh, in short order and I can update you, but I don't know the answer to that question off the top of my head. Councilman. Okay. It just would appear to me, if, if, we're, if we are the Harbor Master, or we have someone that is the Harbor Master, it would be very important for them to be also monitoring the radio, not just Matanzas. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, 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 I do know that Matanzas does under the agreement that we have with them to um, manage the, the mooring field. I do not know if staff independently verifies the, uh, uh, the radio, but we'll try and find out. All right, thank Mr. You. Mayor, Council yes, Member, the, when we go into our hurricane preparedness plan, the harbor master who does not monitor the radio 24-7 would the radio would be covered by staff during that period of time when we go into that mode of operation, but on a day to day basis, it's not monitored all the time. Okay. Yep. The, the manager is correct. I've just received a response from staff saying that it is uh, uh, Matanzas uh, that monitors on 24 seven during normal operations, not staff. Thank you. Any other items, uh, Mr. Tarantoni? Nothing further. Okay. The next item is uh, council members' items and reports, which is actually a separate item than uh, A and B. So we'll go down with A and B, and then we'll come back and we'll finish. We'll conclude with council members' items and individual items and reports. So uh, item A is the reorganization of liaisons to town advisory committees. And this is when we appoint uh, council members to... Uh, be our liaisons to our uh, to our town committees, which is redundant. But anyhow, so uh, who wants to handle that? Roger, do uh, you have the list there? Or? I do, sir. Um, we could just go uh, based on the uh, agenda packet, page 74. The Anchorage Advisory Committee, it meets the third Wednesday of the month at 9 a.m. currently. And uh, the vice mayor had been the, the liaison. I don't know if she wishes to continue or not. I'm happy to stay on unless someone has a burning desire to, uh, to take this. If uh, someone is really interested in, in boating and cruising. Um, but I, I'm happy to stay. Okay. Does anybody else have an interest in that? Okay. Roxanne, you continue on that then. Uh, next one, Roger. The next one is the audit committee. Um, That's myself, yeah. Typically would meet on the second Monday of the month when meetings are required to fulfill its mission. The current liaison is the mayor. Well, I would like to continue on that if, uh, if there's no objection. Okay. Okay, next one is uh, the Bay Oaks Recreational Committee that was uh, it was Councilwoman uh, Shamps committee. Is there anybody um, that would like to? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to take that one if no one else. Uh, that, makes, that makes perfect sense, Dan. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one is the, uh, the CRAB Community Resource Advisory Board, which was also uh, Councilwoman Shamps. Anybody who uh, would like to get on to that? Um, yeah, as, as a recent chair of CRAB, I would be uh, more than happy to take that one. That's cool. Okay, go ahead. I'm at a question. I don't have you guys up on screen. I'm counting on my uh, voice. Okay, uh, and the next one uh, is, is the uh, cell tab, which of course is the Cultural Environmental Learning Center Advisory Board, which uh, Anita was on. Is there uh, someone who would like to take over that? Mr. Mayor, I, I'd be happy to, to take that one on. This is Jim Adderholt. Jim, thank you very much. Okay, uh, they'll be glad to have you, Jim. Uh, let's see. Next is uh, the Marine Resources Task Force, which is MRF, which is uh, Rexanne, you were the uh, liaison. Would you like to continue or someone I'm else? I'm willing to continue, but if Bill would like to take it because of his close association with the group, I'm willing to let him have it because. I also have uh, outside committees and uh, 
the, uh, the I'm working with the census and I'm working with the beach ministers. So okay, I, I will keep it if uh, Bill doesn't want it. I, I love her. I'd be more than happy to take that. Okay. I do not have a Thank you, Bill. Okay, the next one is the uh, Public Safety Committee, which uh, Bruce had uh, attended. Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd like to take that if nobody else is is uh, interested. That's you, that's you, Dan, Alan. Okay. Very good. Okay, well, I thank you all for that, and uh, and the uh, and, and I also thank the committees for all the fine work that they do. Okay, the next item is. Uh, Council representation on uh, outside committee. Uh, this is a motion to designate the council representative of Northwest and the seven outside committees on which council members served. Roger, where is that located in the packet? Is that uh, on page 26? Is the um, outside um, 76. 76 is the page number. Outside committees. Um, okay. These on ship typically with uh, Lee County and, and school board, etc. I will tell Mr. Mayor that um, you probably recall that um, Council Shemp was also working with the air, air group while it wasn't technically perhaps a full mm -hmm. town committee. I don't know if someone wants to. Yes, uh, uh, for, for the new members, take on uh, that mantle or not. Does anyone have an interest in uh, picking up where Joanne left off with that? Uh, that that involved meeting with the uh, the folks from uh, uh, where are they from again? The FAA. Uh, the, uh, FAA and, the, and uh, RSW. And RSW, yes, the uh, the airlines, the uh, airport people. Does anybody have an interest in uh, in continuing that work, or we could just meet with uh, with them as uh, as things came up. Uh, I think we were scheduled, weren't we scheduled to get back together in six months or so from that last meeting? Was that the case? Yes. Um, I think if you remember the uh, FAA administrator, we were trying to meet quarterly and he pushed that back a little bit because he was waiting for to develop more data and, and see the impacts of the um, um, minor investments they were trying to make in the process to better protect the flyovers, Fort Myers Beach. So we, okay. Um, he had asked for a little bit more time rather than a quarterly meeting. So, yes. Okay. I don't see anyone lunging out for that one yet from the council. So uh, why don't we just do that on an ad hoc basis for now and uh, and, uh, and address it when we get a little closer to uh, that next meeting. Is that okay with everybody? Unless yes. somebody, unless somebody yes. wants. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll move on to council members items and reports. Uh, we, if you three members, new members have uh, items and reports, I'm going to be very impressed. We, we but, haven't done the outside committees, Ray, the outside. on page 76. Oh, my gosh. We just Yeah, that's right. We got sidetracked with the FAA. Okay. All right. Let's go down the list here. Uh, uh, who? The first one is the Charlotte Harbor uh, National Estuary Program. Does anybody have an interest in that? Mayor, if I may? Yes. Uh, a couple of years ago, the council decided that both the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program and the Coastal Advisory Council would be uh, represented by the town's environmental and stormwater technician. Okay. If it's the will of the council to continue that way, uh, that in place, or if a council member chooses to fulfill that role, um, that's your decision today. Who who is who would that person be? Chad. Right now it's Chad. Oh, 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 that's Chad. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Unless anyone has an objection, or any council member would like to uh, to uh, to sit, sit on those committees. Now there there is a, a note in there that there's um, there's an alternative. There's an alternate for those. That's correct. Uh, now that's in case Chad can't make it, I assume. That's correct. Um, when this was um, done, I guess last time the council reorganized, we only had one environmental staff member. We now have two. So if Chad could not attend for some reason, he was on leave or had a conflict, Steve Wick would cover it for us. Roger, okay. can you make a request? 
since um, we have used Chad for this purpose, could we put Chad on the agenda occasionally to report to us? Because in the year I've been on council, I've never heard anything about what these committees are doing. I'll, I'll make sure that Chad adds uh, updates to the, his environmental report, which is part of the monthly reports issued in council. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next one, the next group is the uh, Fort Myers Beach Elementary School Youth Council, which was represented by uh, former Mayor Saraceta. Uh, I'd be interested in doing that since I have a, an attachment to the, the, the beach school as my uh, daughter was a graduate of that school, unless anybody else has a uh, burning desire to do that. Okay. Okay, next one is the uh, Horizon Council, uh, which is, I think you all know, but it's a Lee County Economic Development Office Committee that advises the uh, Board of County Commissioners on economic development issues, and uh, Bruce was, uh, was our member, our representative on that. I served on that years ago on my first, uh, first uh, go around here on council, and uh, it's a very good committee. Uh, made up of uh, business people and uh, elected officials and and uh, they, they get a lot done and it's a good group. Uh, is there any interest uh, from the members about sitting on that? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'd be interested in, in, in taking that position. Would you? Okay, Dan. We meet a lot of, a lot of good people on that, Dan, and, uh, and really get the inner workings of how they they work down there. Okay, the next one is the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization, which you all know is the Lee County Board of uh, County Commission Committee that provides leadership with respect to Lee County transportation. Meets monthly, usually the third Friday of the month. Currently, uh, Bruce was the rep with uh, Rex Ham as the, uh, as the alternate. Uh, this is another one that I wouldn't mind serving on uh, unless someone else, uh, I'm not going to. I don't want to hog any of these committees. And also, I don't want, I also don't want to sit on too many, if you know what I mean. But uh, I'd be interested in sitting on that one. But uh, unless someone else uh, has a uh, another desire to do that, I I would I would like to suggest that Jim might be the alternate um, with his state experience. The uh, the MPO has a lot of interaction with the state, um, okay. so uh, I, I'd like to suggest Jim as the alternate rather than me. Okay. Jim, are you interested? Happy to be the alternate. Yeah, Jim, and I can I can see us actually alternating at times for those meetings too, which would be just fine with me. Uh, Whatever works best for you. Okay, so we'll put Ray and Jim. The next one is the uh, Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council. This is a self-governed committee that provides regional leadership addressing long-term challenges and opportunities facing Southwest Florida meets monthly the third Thursday of the month. Current representation is, <clears throat> excuse me, is by myself. Uh, the town receives reports upon request. Uh, I, I, I'll just tell you that uh, I, I served on this, on this uh, committee. The, the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council is a group made up of, uh, of elected officials from throughout the uh, seven county region of Southwest Florida and uh, and also governor appointees to uh, to this committee. I served on it uh, for uh, six years back in the, on my first terms on uh, council. It was a thriving uh, committee that uh, really took on big items, you know, uh, div uh, developments of regional impact and uh, and, and, b and big big uh, development items that affected. Uh, you know, cross county uh, jurisdictions and so forth. And, uh, and it was, uh, <clears throat> so, and they had to, uh, these, these big developments that came by, they were called de developments of regional impact. And uh, so that was, that was the major function of, uh, of the committee at the time. And, uh, but since then, uh, Governor Scott gutted that, uh, those those uh, regional development councils uh, voided the legislation or whatever he did and uh, 
and really it's it's a it's a skeleton of its former self it really has it doesn't have the uh the authority that it used to have it doesn't have the uh the influence that it used to have and uh it certainly doesn't uh it uh, doesn't legislate the way it used to so it uh and as a result of that it's uh it, it's been a group of uh people getting together uh monthly or whatever and uh several of the uh, jurisdictions the municipalities and the counties throughout the region have uh, dropped out of it and so forth and i'm sorry to report that because it was a uh it was a terrific uh, a group but uh <clears throat> i give you this background information because uh, i've been attended the meetings and uh and frankly uh you know i'm trying to be kind here it's uh our time could be better spent in, in different uh in different committees and uh now with all that being said if someone wants to take a crack at this you're you're, you're more than welcome but uh it's uh it's uh they're 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 struggling right now and and, and frankly they're struggling because of the the, uh, the the different jurisdictions are the ones that fund fund its existence and with uh with with lots of the members they're their uh their funding is is uh, evaporating and, and and frankly they're on life support and they're they're operating on a shoestring so with all that being said uh i'm gonna not choose to uh to renew my representation there now if someone else wants to get in there and give it a crack uh after that glowing recommendation you're more than welcome but uh I, I, my recommendation I, and i don't know what they're charging us now roger i'm sure it's uh you know, it's it's not a ton of money, but it's uh it's certainly something that comes out of our out of our funds. But uh, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. If anyone's interested, uh, you don't have to decide right now. I don't think, but uh, you can you can check into it and uh, and see if you'd like to serve on that. Well, just let me come in, Ray. Uh, way to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know something. I have to be honest with you, and uh, there, there's not another committee on here that uh, that I would say that about. But uh, this 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 uh, this organization has seen its day, and and uh, it's it's no more. It's uh, so uh, that's that's my. Uh, I have to be frank about it, and uh, and, and there you have Ms. it, Miss Mayor. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, it, and I believe your comments covered it, but just so everyone understands, the, the state legislature made some changes to how larger projects get reviewed and the regional planning councils had a very significant role and that role is diminished as a result of that action. So hence uh, why your comments are appropriate. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, what, what they're trying to do now is just get together uh, quarterly actually the last meeting i was at they were suggesting to meet quarterly and mostly that would be a uh, sort of an informational meeting just just to get together and and shoot the breeze about what's going on on around the uh around the uh, the, uh southwest florida uh seven counties which to me you know i think our time can be spent uh doing uh, doing better things than that so anyhow uh yes We'll pass over that right now. All right, we'll go to the TDC. Roxanne, you've been on the Territory Development Council. I presume you want, you'd like to continue that? I, I would, and I, uh, as the alternate, I do need to be appointed by uh, this council because I have to seek an appointment through uh, the Lee County Commissioners to actually serve um, as the designated. Uh, we don't <clears throat> always have, we alternate with Sanibel, Sanibel with having a vote we currently do have a vote this, this I, year i would like to uh i'm not sure that that's accurate we, it's it's supposed to be a two-year alternating term so unless somebody was there before anita um i think it may be two years but either way i would like to to uh continue to serve okay and uh and i would uh i'd be interested in being your alternate how's that they, when I was there as the alternate to Anita, they told me I could not vote because of the fact that it was an appointment by the commission and you're not a voting member. It, they function differently than the MPO did for some reason. Well, I'll tell you what, 
<laughs> just in the in the event that something happened to you and you weren't able to attend, at least at least we'd have a representation there, whether we could vote or not, and, uh, and and know what was going on. I welcome that, and will inform you if I cannot go. Okay, is that okay? I, well, I, that requires a vote of the council. Uh, I'll move that uh, we uh, appoint the uh, council, uh, excuse me, Vice Mayor uh, House of Frost to uh, to be our represent our representative on the uh, Tourist Development Council <clears throat> and uh, myself as the mayor as being the alternate. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. If, if I might, um, there's one outside committee that was left off the list, I believe. I currently am appointed by the Lee County Commissioners as our designated person to the Lee Human Services Council. Yes. And I would like to continue in that role. Does anybody object to that? No. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rexanne. Uh, okay, we'll move on to uh, council members' items and reports. Uh, We'll start with you, uh, newly minted Councilman Allers. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Nothing. Uh, Councilman Adderhalt. Nothing as well, thank you. Geez, you've had all this time to come up with something. Uh, yeah. Councilman, Councilman Beach. Uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, one is, you know, our advisory committees are all on a hiatus now. Uh, I think it's worth having a discussion about see what we can do to get the most out of our, our advisory committees and see if it is worth having them meet virtually. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Um, the other thing is uh, uh, it, it makes sense to me, given what we're going through, to have um, you know, a COVID-19 update both on our um, uh, the restrictions that we have in place and what the latest uh, what the latest health numbers are as a recurring agenda item is that something that's feasible? I, I don't see why I, I don't see why not. That sounds like a good idea. Let us know where we are, and uh, maybe on a uh, on a state and county basis. Uh, I don't know if we can get those numbers on a town level. I doubt we can, but uh, anyhow, that sounds good. Yeah, an update would be that would be great. Let us know where Mr. we're Mayor? at. Yes, sir. All right. The the those numbers are updated um, at least once a day, sometimes multiple times a day by the, the, the Florida Department of Health. Yeah, I see them on TV. Yeah. That's rebroadcast by uh, multiple multiple other uh, folks, uh, including Lee County, etc. I have been um, sending the council updates of the uh, county's um, incident reporting system and copies of that uh, health department uh, update. Yes. yes. Um, so I have two questions. One is, would you like me to continue to do that on a daily basis? And then secondarily, if, if we put it on the agenda, it would probably have to be a sort of a walk-on item because by the time we print the, from the day we print the agenda, by the time you get the agenda, you know, four, possibly five days have elapsed and those numbers have changed dramatically, unfortunately. Hopefully soon for the better, but right now they're not trending that way. Um, but um, we clearly can put on the agenda a discussion item and, and allow the council to discuss the current status and, um, and go into the statistics or other pertinent details that they feel is important for the community to know, or we'll do our best to answer questions as best we can. Well, maybe what we could do, Roger, is uh, you could include it on uh, under your items every uh, every meeting, and uh, just have that line out update on the COVID uh, nineteen uh, report update, and uh, you could. Uh, you could have the latest uh, numbers available from that morning or. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then as far as the report that you've been sending out uh, daily there, uh, 
I don't know how the other members feel. Uh, it's very informative. It's very comprehensive, but it's also very redundant every day. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, I mean, what, what do I care? I mean, it's just one, one more uh, email, but uh, if, uh, if the other members wish to keep uh, receiving that, that's fine with me. That's fine. How do you all feel about that? I think it's helpful, yeah. particularly over these next few weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it's true. Uh, they're predicting a bad, bad couple of weeks. But uh, anyhow, okay. I, I think to to the larger picture that uh, you know one of the most difficult things I think for small businesses um, now is is uncertainty, and uh, I think that it's probably worth having a conversation about talking about um, how we would reopen what would our strategy be to reopen? Because um, my feeling is I know the businesses are hurting. Um, I, I do take our, our island residents' health and safety as, as paramount, but I would like to come up with a strategy where we can reopen in a way that optimizes the financial aspects, but limits the number of new people that are moving through the community as much as possible um, as a way to have a blueprint. So we, we are not just, uh, you know, reacting to the situation that we have something in mind and the business people can, um, can use that to level, generate some level of certainty. Well, I, I suppose uh, the closer we get, uh, it, it would be, it would be uh, optimal to have a plan in place ahead of time. And, uh, and with this new PIO person that is, uh, is coming aboard today, I'm sure we can get out of a lot of reports out through her, to, uh, to notify not only our residents here, uh, but also, of course, all the businesses as well. So uh, I think that's something that we can all, we can all start thinking about. And, uh, and I'm sure the staff is already thinking about, uh, about that, uh, about that day when, whenever that day is that comes and, uh, we will, we will have to have a plan. I'm Mr. sorry, Mayor? Roger. What was, yes, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that, um, I think the community knows this, but it's very important. I think that this town council has been at the forefront, if not ahead of, of many of our peers and perhaps even at times the state government in terms of what we've done to try to protect our residents. Um, yes. I suspect the uh, situation we'll be looking at uh, when things get better is that um, things might be opening up um, very quickly. And as a tourist destination, we may require some local protections to make sure that we're not overwhelmed too quickly versus the other way around. But um, I think you said it correctly, and I think others on the council said it correctly. We're, we have a rough couple of weeks ahead of us. Uh, we'll continue to think about that and discuss that uh, with the council. Um, but, uh, you know, unlike some other folks, I don't want to set markers out there that, that may not be hittable in terms of dates and when things may or may not happen because there's just too much, too many unknowns at this point, but clearly it's, we're continuing to think about it and we welcome your suggestions individually as, as we see the best way to continue to protect the town as things get better so that we don't open too many things too quickly and have problems. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce will have uh, some ideas and so forth, uh, but we really have to hunker down and just uh, just get through this, little, this stretch here that we're gonna go through and, uh, and uh, make sure everybody comes out of it on the other side okay. All right, well, thank you for that. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor Hassefrost. I have a couple of things just for clarification. At a prior special meeting, we discussed raking, and I was under the impression that, that people were going to be working with Roger to do uh, limited raking. Uh, I've received some inquiries from, inquiries from people as to whether that has occurred. Roger? Yes. Um... Madam Vice Mayor, I have a uh, announcement that uh, Chad had been working on to send out to the affected community, the beach raking vendors, and I guess the properties, make it available to the property that um, 
they rake for. I don't know if it's on a compensated basis or if it's on the basis of their larger agreement for um, putting the beach chairs out there as an in-kind service. But that being what it may, um, so we have this ready to go and uh, there were some edits um, that I have to it. But I guess the biggest question and the biggest point I hope the council is in agreement on is, is that while we're, we're going to put this out to the public, to the rakers today, we want to make it clear that uh, we do not want the raking to, to signal that the beach is open. Understood. I just was asking for- and, and to that extent, we're going to put precautionary language in here that said that we're going to allow it, providing that uh, that doesn't change that paradigm. And if it does, it will be revisited. Understood. So with that clarification, we will get it out within an hour of the closing of this meeting. And on a, a similar note, um, I've received uh, questions about turtle time. Uh, that's a similar situation that I believe the council had consensus that, that you would work with those folks to ensure that they could continue their work. I did receive a question as to whether possibly you could provide uh, a letter which they could copy and print to carry with them so that if they were stopped by the sheriff, that they would be able to present this letter that indicates they, they were allowed to be on the beach in these dawn hours to check for nests. I don't know if anybody else thinks that's a good idea. It sounds like it might be a good idea to me. Um, I think what, what, what our intention was is to uh, notify the, the West District captain and through their roll call procedure, whatever, let them know that turtle time is begun their activities and that um, they would be operating in the early morning hours doing, doing their work. However, if you want us to, to draft a letter that they can have in their back pocket, um, we'd be happy to do that. The only reason I would indicate that is that I know we sent some messages out through those meetings in the past and the word didn't always get to, to someone who was substituting or wasn't a regular to the beach. And I, I just thought it wouldn't be a hard thing to do to provide them with a letter. I don't know if anybody else thinks it's. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we just, uh, we can do that. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll generate a letter for their back pocket. Should they get challenged? And I would just say send it to Eve Haverfield and then she could notify her volunteers and by email and they could copy and print. Right. But we'll, we just want everyone to understand it's very limited to doing turtle time activities. It's right. not be doing other things while they're doing turtle time activities. It's purely for that specific activity. And that, they have to be, and that they have to be wearing a turtle time shirt while they're doing that. Yes, we ask all the people we authorize to be on the beach, whether it be FWC or we always ask them to wear a signia indicating that they're sort of an official employee yeah. doing official yeah. function, yeah. not just traversing the beach. And now, just, there, just so people know, turtle time doesn't start, I believe, until April 15th. And then just, just, to, just a point on, uh, on Roxanne's idea, I think it might be a good idea to put the rules in that letter because, um, you know, turtle time starts early. They need to report in by 7.30, I think it is. Um, that's the deal they have so that they can notify the people who rake the beach that it's timely. But there are also other people who go out and stake out nests. And what, if it comes to that, um, looks at nests that hatch. And so those are activities that would not necessarily be in that time window of the um, early morning. But those are people who are permit holders and they have a special certification from the state to do that. We'll, we'll reach out to Eve to um, try to cover as many circumstances as we can anticipate so that there hopefully won't be a unanticipated circumstance in the field where someone is being challenged unnecessarily. Anything else, Vice Mayor? No, thank you. Okay. I don't have anything to, uh, to add. I just would like to uh, congratulate the new members once again. Uh, welcome you to the council. Uh, I'm sorry it's under these conditions, but uh, what are you going to do? You know. Uh, anyhow, we look forward to uh, to working with you. And uh, and my my one ad admonition is always 
we're all on the same team, and we, we're all trying to get the best things done for the uh, for the town. And I and I know that uh, I know that you all feel the same way. So, with all that being said, I'll uh, thank you very much for the meeting today, and uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Yes. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any objection? Hearing none, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Ray. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate that. And, oh, by the way, it's 11.15 when we adjourn. Thanks, guys. Good to see you all. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs>